you have to be honest with yourself is what do I actually value? Well, I don't value commitment and responsibility from men. I'm actually valuing this. Where people get wrong is they edit their values mentally, but not actually in terms of behavior. So mentally, they'll say they've got all these great values. If you speak to everybody, they'll say, I want this, that, and the other, and they say it well. But try and derive your values as almost do an inventory of your actual behaviors and who you've been rewarding in your past, who have you been falling in love with, what are your patterns, who have you rejected, and that shows you what your values actually are, not what you think they are. Don't airbrush your values just to sound like you're looking for someone great. Who are you actually rewarding? And if you do an inventory of your past relationships and you realize that, I've always said no to guys that are actually very kind. I've always been very attached to men that are toxic and you know unavailable. I kind of always attached to men who are following a bunch of bikini girls online. And so your values are a bit like, they're not consistent. That your values are you're looking for somebody who deprives you of the commitment and connection. Now that you know your value, you can either change it or accept it. But don't delude yourself into thinking you've got the right values when you're in the dating pool because that will have you confused because you'll think you're doing nothing wrong and you just can't find the right guy. But it's not that you're doing nothing wrong and you can't find the right guy. It's because you're rewarding the wrong and then assuming you still want the right guy. Mm. Yeah. yeah, getting your values right. Getting your values, get, yeah. Look, look at your behaviors; they'll tell you your values. I can say I'm really healthy, but I never go to the gym and I don't eat healthy. That means I'm not. So what you're saying has to be in line with what you're doing for it yep. to be a value. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and if you live out of alignment, even with your stated values, you're going to lose respect for yourself. That's yeah. where integrity and self-respect yeah. end up coming from. Mm -hmm. um, if you encounter somebody who doesn't want you and that breaks you and you yeah. can't bear to walk away and now you're trying to convince, cajole, whatever, that only further makes you seem weak and horrible. Yeah. I mean, it's just that's it's such a really, spiral. Oh, yeah, yeah, God, it's, it's going to make you feel worse. And, and I'm so worse. surprised the pharmaceutical industry hasn't invented a pill for self esteem because they have. It's I, called alcohol. I, <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, of course. But Lowers does that give you self esteem or confidence? Uh, it gives you confidence, <laughs> confidence, but confidence is the thing that you want from self esteem. I feel like, If you had uh, high self esteem and you were just anxious, you'd be like, self esteem is meaningless. Mm -hmm. So. It, yeah, it really is. Confidence is that byproduct. Because I feel like confidence can just mean your ability to do a task, but self-esteem is more uh, your ability to understand what you deserve in life. Confidence is feeling good because you can do a task. Yeah. So it's like you're walking in and like you know I'm going to be able to handle this. Yeah. That is a really awesome feeling. Yeah. Uh, and it's an intoxicating feeling on the other side for mm -hmm. a woman who's like, oh, I like the way this feels. A person mm -hmm. could be playful. They can hold that tension, yeah. but really, yes, there's a reason that alcohol has been a social lubricant for mm -hmm. thousands of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's as old, if not older, than the Bible itself. Yeah, it's, it's like, older, I would and, imagine. And yeah, mentioned. Jesus so, drank. Yeah, we, we turn yeah. water right into that one. <laughs> but I don't want to leave this yeah. idea of, okay, what what is broken? Yeah. Who's to blame in the sense of, if we can actually identify the issue, mm -hmm. then we can back out of it. So I'm going to ask you yeah, again. the same mm -hmm. question, but from a an oblique angle here. Okay. So who's to blame if somebody's fat? The fat person <laughs> or the food industry, microplastics, uh, okay. environment, yeah. culture, etc. I would say, uh, you know, the porn industry is very much responsible for destroying the masculinity of men and making them unappealing. I would say the porn industry is very much dedicated its life to um, kind of hijacking children from a very young age and then turning them into addicts by the time they're teenagers and then turns them into consumers of uh, prostitution as adults. It kind of goes in that order. And um, so I believe that the porn industry is very much, you know, uh, highly responsible for it. But I also think it's a culture where we We've replaced kind of, uh, uh, there seems to be nothing else left to, for people to feel part of a group anymore. There isn't any male groups the way they used to be. There isn't tribal experiences for men. So their only way to feel the kind of um, euphoria is now just limited to sex. I don't know if there's as many tribes or as there's many problem solving going on in society. I would imagine when life was more difficult, men would have to be problem solvers. And that kind of boost of ego that you get for every problem you solve is now replaced by technology. So the only boost that's left available is either food or, you know, pornography or just your basic primitive needs. So I think there is also a lack of... Um, just tribes in general and problem solving life is just a bit too comfortable and easy for men and women but I think it has a more detrimental effect on the psychology of a man when life is too easy and is too comfortable 
Mm. That that's very interesting and very insightful. Um, I want to pin you down though. Mm -hmm. If somebody's fat, whose fault is it? Theirs. Yeah, I think it, you st you still have a choice, and 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 your choices can be inhibited by you know your uh, the original wounds of your trauma. It can be inhibited by the, the parents and the role models you've got. Some people are, are left with really really bad start to life, so they believe their choices are limited, but doesn't mean their choices actually are limited. So you might have really terrible parents where they just feed you endless rubbish. They are really overweight, so they don't role model how to be you know how to be effective. Your school dinners might be unhealthy I understand all of that so your choices do get more limited but there's still a choice it's limited and it's difficult but there's still a choice what would you say um, so this is interesting I've gone on such a journey with my thoughts on obesity that I have mm -hmm. a feeling it mirrors some of the journey that you've been on um, but you may be at a midpoint mm -hmm. Uh, so here's the journey that I went on. So I grew up in a morbidly obese family yeah. and I was able to escape that. And I was mm -hmm. able to escape that by taking just unrelenting control of what I put in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, you can solve this problem. And I used to loop around a very simple idea. There were no obese people in Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. Now I know how much that makes people angry, but I <laughs> needed to run a thought exercise yeah. to find out, is this really a thing where some people just can't lose the weight? Or is this really, if you reduce your calories enough yeah. that you will lose fat? Okay, so So genetically clearly, you had, uh, there was obesity in your family? Oh yes. So there is a predisposition. A hundred percent. So that's where I start, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, this is just a calorie problem. If you mm -hmm. reduce your calories enough, you will lose weight. That is a true statement. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to stop there mm -hmm. and say, oh, then you're to blame. I was yeah. able to do it and you're to blame. Then I went into, okay, I really do understand that mm -hmm. this is, extremely hard for people yeah. for reasons that are out of their control. Mm -hmm. So for instance, a uh, hundred years ago, yeah. virtually nobody grew up fat. Yeah. So something has happened yeah. now to make that a problem. So a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. virtually nobody would be addicted to pornography. It'd just be yeah. too, it existed, yeah. but it would be so hard to get a hold of yeah. that you're not going to be obese. Calories used to be hard to come by. Food was not mm -hmm. engineered by the most brilliant scientists in the world to be literally perfect for triggering yeah. you to overeat. They weren't as cheap. And so yeah. we really have done things, including just arranging our metabolism by mm -hmm. there being microplastics in the food, the food being made from horrendous ingredients, disrupting the microbiome. Mm -hmm. I mean, just on and on and on. And so as I went through this journey, at first I was like, hey, just eat less. Like, I love you. No, yeah. there's no moral no judgment, judgment, but you, you really can do this. Then I went to, ooh, like maybe people really are stuck and they're mm -hmm. just in a terrible system. And now I'm at, you are in a terrible system. You are in a problem, not of your own making, because this would have yeah. started when you were a kid and all that, but only you can get you out of this yeah. problem. And so that's the message that I, I want guys to hear. Yeah. Hey, you're in a bad situation. Absolutely. I don't it's think it was because fault. of your, no. like you didn't start the cultural momentum mm -hmm. that has led us to this moment. And everything you've detailed, I think is all accurate. Mm -hmm. But no one person yeah. is to blame for any of that. But they're the only ones that can solve the problem yeah. for them. Exactly. And so then it starts to get very interesting in terms of how you look at the world mm -hmm. and where all of this goes. Yeah. Um, so, okay, you circle around porn a, a lot. lot. A lot. So <laughs> what what is it about porn? Is it shaping the brain at a young age and yeah. then that has knock-on effects? What is it about porn? It's um, destroying the selection process of men. It's dehumanizing their selection process and then they're so devastated when their women have, have no respect for them, have cheated on them and, and left them with, every, with all their money and now lives with their new boyfriend. But they don't realize it all stemmed from their poor selection and their poor selection all came from pornography. I did a video recently where I explained that I'll have men who might live in the States or might live in India or something like that, but they are fixated on being with a young Colombian girl or a young Thai girl or a young girl from you know um, Ukraine, uh, who's half their age, a quarter of their age, and speaks a completely different language, but they're like, that's my type. And 
and I just thought to myself, how? Do, and I, I kept hearing it, and I was like thinking to myself, how do you have anything in common with a girl in like from this culture and doesn't speak the same language, and is very young? How is that your type? And he's like, I've just always been attracted to it. And I was like, but then therefore your attraction is based entirely physically and nothing to do with reciprocity. Like she's also attracted to me, and no other form of connection is important to you. So you have reduced women down to a vagina, and you just a vagina with a particular color size this that and the other and age is now part of it that's what you've reduced it down to 